Maybe so. Oh, you have? Yeah. Oh. yeah that's probably different. Definitely. Definitely. Office or is it kind of it okay. it depends. Yeah. Yeah. Some some days, like you know, the past few days last week, there weren't a lot of people because of the end of the month and people were scrambling to hey, where's the see all their people. Where's the helicopter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Where's the helicopter? You want us to put one? <laughs> we can. <laughs> sure. Put a plow in front of it. <laughs> I'll figure out how to do it. <laughs> hey, listen. Stay up if you, you, right, if you, you can, if you can take the snow out of the air before it hits the ground. That's right? a good point. And we can blow it back up. <laughs> right. And we don't. We don't have to get it off the street. Let's just blow it to another town. There you go. That works too. I like it. All right, we need to look into that. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> Yikes! I forgot to call my guys to come in tomorrow morning. You can use a mouse there, Luke, if you want. So, oh, yeah. I'm so used to. Yeah. I'm looking at this, and it's kind of it's like my computer. So. Okay, I can hear you. All right. Let me turn you down just a little bit, in case you get excited and super loud. I'm Start yelling. I don't. I don't have much talking to do tonight, as far as I can see. Yeah, I don't think there's much to get excited about either. So. Uh, hopefully, uh, we all need to go. Just so I, get easy. Easy. Well, I, I expended my energy this week. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Brady has now made it official. He has. Ah. We'll oh. see. But we'll see. Never, but then, that doesn't mean he can't change his mind. That's right. Ball. Well, somebody yeah. said that, a commenter said that uh, we were going to sign a contract with the Patriots for one day. So that he could retire as a patriot. Yeah, as a patriot. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know. Because that was that subject was with Robert Kraft the first day that he said he might be retiring. Oh, okay. And Robert Kraft was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it was a little bit of bad blood there. Like, well, not so much bad blood, but just. Yeah, when he left. He yeah. left. He left. He wasn't traded away or anything. Right. He left yeah, he left on his own accord. Yeah. All right, well, we're all here. We'll get the meeting started. It is 2.07. 18.07. One, three times. Uh, first things first, we'll take attendance. All the counselors who are currently on the board are present. Uh, next, we'll look to approve or modify the agenda. Does anyone have any modifications that they would like to make to the agenda? If not. Now I'll make a motion to be accepted agenda as printed. All right, I have a motion by Paul. I have a second. I'll yeah. second. All oh, there. Okay. And we have a second. All those in favor? All right, motion carries. All right, next we're going to look to approve the minutes of the January 18th, uh, 2020 regular council meeting. We also have the assessor's minutes, correct? Yes. Okay, so we just going on there before. I'll look at those as well. So I'll make a motion that we approve the assessor's meeting minutes of January 18th, 2222. I'm joking. That sounds great. <laughs> yes. Uh, as written. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. One, one, two, <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. All right. Motion by Pete. Second by Ann. Meeting minutes of the assessor's meeting. All those in favor? <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we accept the town council meeting minutes of January 18th, 2022, as written. Motion by Peter. I have a second. I have a second. Second by Paul. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Motion carries. All right, moving on to item number four, old business. 
buildings and properties being listed with a realtor. We got that. Yep. So that's Edna's building. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get any bikes on Craigslist on that building at all. And um, so I reached out to Fields Realty. They're going to list it. She's going to list it. She's come up and looked at it. She's taken photos. Um, she was supposed to electronically send me the paperwork to sign today, but I don't have it in my email right now, so she will be here today or tomorrow. So we'll get, get that in her hands, and uh, it goes out the door. Hopefully it will. She seemed to think that the building was in better shape than I said. certainly think it is. She thought the, the foundation was solid, and, and uh, that if it needed an uh, inspection, that it would do an own inspection. I know we've set, uh, and I don't know what kind of price she's going to set on it. Um, if somebody does make us an offer, uh, the building does need work. Yeah. So at that time, I mean, I think it's a fair offer if somebody has a good uh, plan for the building. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I don't want to give it away, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to let it sit there too long either, and where it becomes. Uh, you know. I asked her to list it at the tax assessed value yeah. for now, and uh, but we were open to offers. So if somebody was okay. interested, to approach. And we'll make that call at that time. Yeah. So yeah. I think I'll it's a fair it. offer, and it's a good uh, good reason. Yeah, we, yeah. we should move it. We should move it. Absolutely. So I think they're a whole lot. But yeah. <laughs> awesome. Any other buildings that we're listing? Well, we have a couple in the think tank here. We're just waiting for email. We're waiting on a couple of buildings to yep. follow through the process here. We're going to post yeah. one by party to that tomorrow. And then uh, the other one is still being dealt with through legal litigation. litigation. But I, uh, Nancy, you're going to address that, right? Dorn, Dorn uh, Nancy will talk yeah. about that. I think Dorn, the manager, at me. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Luke, did you did you want to share about the Woodland property? Yes, they'll try. Yep, I yep I do. So we also own a property. Uh, the uh, revolving loan ended up with a piece of property in the town of Woodland um, that I asked Fields to go look at as well, and to uh, see if she had any ideas on what the value of it might be. It's twenty five acres. It's near Woodland Consolidated School. I don't think we're going to build a salt shed down there. Um, probably ought to be looking to part with that. It belongs, it was granted to the revolving loan as part of a All chapter. Right, the, the history with that years. was is that the revolving loan had lent uh, some money to the, the individual that formerly owned the uh, colonial before uh, uh, before Steve. Before Steve. Okay. 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 <clears throat> and they, he defaulted on his loan. And he had a piece of, of uh, real estate in Woodland along with this piece of property, like the 25, 30 acres. And it's basically not usable for any type of activity or building or farming or whatever. It's more of a swampy type of piece of property. It looks like four of it is usable and the other 21 are just... Yeah, just not that great. Swamp or whatever, right. whatever it's listed. And so as a, as a result, that piece of property technically owns the Revolving Loan Committee, and, but it's up to what the Revolving Loan Committee to assign the town to go ahead and list it. And me being the chairman, I'm you know, all for it. Let's move it, uh, get whatever we get for it, and, and we don't need to be in the real estate business. Uh, that's all great. Yeah. But that's how that that's piece how of property became Okay. For past reasons, that's how that piece probably became. You know, looking back, we've been paying taxes on it for quite some time. Yeah. So, and uh, just right. paid the tax bill on it. So, so right now it's costing us. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 For now, let's move it. So, it's good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for reminding me about that. Yeah. All right. Moving on to number five new business. Uh, item A. Uh, new Western Star truck update. So I just want to update you guys uh, on the Western Star that was approved at the annual town meeting last June. Uh, I got a phone call last Monday from the dealership saying that he will no longer be selling us the truck because Dagon Holton, the dealership we bought it from, sold 
their dealership to Allegiance. This is a company out of Massachusetts, Vermont. They own 37, 38 other dealerships throughout the state of New England states. So I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit. My God, we're ready for production. We're supposed to be in production in February, and now this, we can't get this truck. So I talked to the salesman a little bit, and he offered us a uh, international, spec us out an international truck as well. Give me a quote, and we'll take it from there. So I kind of thought about it for a little bit, and I figured there's got to be something, another avenue to go. So I contacted other Western Star dealerships. O'Connor GMC, uh, O'Connor trucks down in Augusta. Um, they weren't really interested in grabbing our truck and carrying it forward for us. Um, we reached out to Freightliner Maine, pretty much the same scenario as well. Let me think about it and we'll get back with you. So I called, contacted HB Fairfield, which is our uh, one of our reps, going to put the plows in the trucks, our box in the trucks. And I kind of picked his brain, and he kind of referred me to Ryan Daigle. Ryan Daigle, he's a descendant off of uh, Daigle Holton. I don't know if it's Greg or Gary. I don't know if it's his son or whatever. Anyways, uh, he works with Valley Limited out of Hartland in Canada. He kind of knew that his parents were selling business, so he kind of moved away from the family business. And he planned a job for uh, Valley Limited out of Hartland again. So I gave him a call and I told him, here, this is near where we're at. And our truck is supposed to be in production in February, and now everything just got dropped, and I really don't want to start back from square one and wait another two more years before we get a pop truck. And uh, so he, he talked a lot about his boss, and right now they're willing to grab the truck out of production for us carry it forward, and sell the truck. And they agreed to sell the truck at the same price as what the quote we got from Dale Moulton, which is nice, Excellent. very nice. Talked to him a little bit about warranty, because we're now I'm dealing with a Canadian firm crossing trucks into Canada, what's going to be the issue. Um, and guy said, we've dealt with uh, warranty work for Canadians before, and we should be able to have, you guys shouldn't have any issues bringing a truck to us or resurface it for you guys or what, which was good. He also said they were building a new trailer facility up in St. Leonard. And um, they're really committed, Western Star is really committed to providing services to us in the Valley, specifically Port Kent. There's a lot of logging trucks up there. and. We talk, talked about this before, 99% of them are Western Stars. So Western Star is really committed to keeping warranty work, service for the guys that own Western Star trucks. Um, they're actually thinking about building a facility up here somewhere. Just Valley Limited is thinking about buying a facility up here. Valley Limited also bought Freightliner of Maine just recently. So they're acquiring all the dealerships throughout Maine there's one in Holton, there's one in Westbrook and a few other places. So, so it's kind of a lot of weight lifted off my shoulders because last Monday I was kind of, my God, we've been waiting so long. Uh, we're still waiting. Uh, I did get an update from uh, Ryan Diego today. Can I ask him where our truck is in production? And he said they got pushed to the second quarter. So which means it's going to be probably May to July before the truck is built. So we're a little bit delayed from February, but at least it's still there, and we're going to move forward with it. So kind of, a, like I said, a lot of weight lifted off my shoulders from last Monday and Tuesday, which I was making phone calls left and right and trying to keep this going. So it's, so Allegiance, what's going to happen to Western Star, Dago Holton out of Fort Kent? Are they going to turn into international? Is that what they're strictly doing? Strictly international. Just international. Because yeah. Allegiance is an international dealership. Western Star and international are competitors. Western Star, Diego Holton, and the one in Herman was the last dealership that had international and Western Star together, just because they've been doing it for 38 years, 39 years. So this opportunity, when Diego Holton sold to Allegiant, it was the opportunity for Western Star to park ways and working with their competitors side by side.
So they're no longer going to be servicing WestSSR or doing warranty work on WestSSR. They're strictly going to be uh, international. So when your truck is built, is it my understanding that it's going to be built in Canada now or still built no, in the it's U.S.? No, still, still being built in North Carolina, I believe. Okay. It's still be an American truck. But they will be the dealer? Yeah, Valley will be the dealership that we're going to be working on. You said they're out of Hart. Hartman. How yeah. far is that from? It's outside of Monticello, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 not, it's not too far from Yeah, it's not far from Center. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Heartland, they have another facility down in Fredericton. And again, they're building a new facility for trailers only here across in St. Leonard. So, I kind of put a bug in uh, Ryan's ear and said, hey, listen, got a nice industrial park in Van Buren here. Yeah, if you want to build, you yeah. want to build a facility. Yeah. Right now. And, I'll, yeah. and I did put a bug in his ear and said, hey, listen, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be nice? It would be nice. Yeah. No, I did put a bug in here. Say we have a facility here, industrial park here in, in Van Buren, and I'm sure the town be willing to work with you guys if that's something you guys are interested in doing. Yeah. Because so, there's a lot of trucks here in Western Star in the valley here. Well, it's unreal. No, I know that. That's when we when we had our tanker built. Uh, I I was working in Holton at the time at the commercial truck facility, and. It was 500 trucks coming through there a day, and I was talking to each one of these truckers, and I, you know, just mm -hmm. me being the gift of gab. What do you guys think? We're looking to build a 4,000 gallon tanker. What would you put Western Star? Western Star. Western Star. Western Star. Western Star. I mean, Western Star speaks for itself, and I mean, they're a great truck. Our truck upstairs is a 2003. It's almost 20 years old. The truck's been a tank. What do you guys have for an engine that truck? That is a 427, 4, 425 horse Caterpillar. Caterpillar engine, there yeah. But it's been governed down. Right. We governed it down to uh, 62 and a half miles an hour because with 4,000 gallons of yeah. water, we were hitting 85. Yeah, well. So <laughs> somebody was definitely going to kill right. themselves. Right. So yeah. we, we governed it to 62 and a half miles an yeah. hour. Plenty of power. Yeah. Nice truck. Yeah, but well, this new one is going to have 350 horse, 1,000 RPM, so it'll be yeah. one of the biggest engines we're going to have in our fleet, because we run very small cats, pussy cats I call them, because they're around 250 horse, yeah. and Nick is here can say we struggle a lot, try to plow. As can. far as your warranty work, as far as the border is concerned, and don't correct me if I'm wrong, um, all you do is you stop on our side, right. we fill out a form, you get your warranty work, you come back, there's no fee, there's no cost, there's no brokerage fee. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're all set there. If that's any concern to any Well, it was anything. somewhat concerned because I didn't know the process yeah. of crossing the border and so I know don't worry about, about that. Issue. With COVID, and I even do. right now with COVID, as long as you're doing it for business yeah. and you are whoever's bringing it over is, is vaccinated, right. You can do you can yeah. do that all day long. Yeah. yeah. Like I say, Western Star is very committed to uh, servicing us in the valley. And it's not only municipality for me, just one misstep. Uh, Metal West is looking at buying a brand new truck. Grand Isle is in the same scenario. I mean, their guys are calling me last Tuesday, Wednesday, calling me, hey, Rick, what are you guys doing? I said, well, I said, right now, I really don't want to go back to square one right. and have to have an annual town meeting, no, purchase an international, whatever, whatever, and uh, wait another year and a half, two years. I mean, we've been waiting long enough. It's going to be over a year. By the time we even get this truck, this truck that we ordered now, so yeah, it's, it's a long process. So, but like I say, they're very committed. West Star was very committed on helping us out. So, and like I say, Ryan Diego was we very fortunate. Ryan Diego stepped up to the plate and offered to get the truck at the same cost. Yeah, that was another concern I had too. So, yeah, especially with the way things are going up, right? How fast yeah. they're going up, right? So, so, yeah. so that's where we are with the truck. Uh, the other concern I want to bring up, and I give you, give you guys. Uh, some papers, so kind of just a basic fleet that I have, and these are the, the pieces of equipment that we run day in, day out. The first page is the, the loader, uh, that's a 2015. Um, I'm really adamant if I'm here in another couple of years, I'm adamant of replacing that, that piece of equipment because we're going to be at 10 years old. Uh, it's still going to have value. Another couple more years, and I think it's the wise of the council to look at trading it in, not wait till it's 30 years old, 25 years old. So you're not getting anything for it. Right, exactly. And like I say, that's our backbone of our public works. And Nick is here, can realize that we use that machine day in, day out. Every day. So 
But before we start having issues with it, I think it's priority that we, we change that. Uh, How many hours on it now? Four, five. Five, five something. Yeah. The other one's the bad boy. Again, now it's purchased through wastewater. Um, so going back to that loader, that's the only piece of equipment that we have ever bought for the highway department. New, since I've been there. So I always get these little thing, oh, Rick wants another truck, Rick buys this, Rick buys that. Well, that's the only thing we've ever bought new. All the other pieces of equipment we've ever bought, the old trucks, we bought them very cheaply. They're, we use them for our snow haulers. We paid nine to, to 12,000 bucks for these trucks. Yeah. I mean, very, very, very cheap. Try to find a pickup truck or a car for 10,000 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, where I'm, that's where I'm going at. Yeah. I say the backhoe is uh, a new one that's purchased by wastewater just because of the funding issues Towns had. Um, the greater as the backhoe paid? Yes. Okay. Wastewater paid for it. Okay. The greater to two thousand. We did do an engine replacement call four years ago. Now? Yeah, it's four years. Okay. Yeah. So and that's pushing Nick how many hours? Yeah, we did the engine probably eight thousand, <laughs> roughly around nine ten thousand hours on that. Not on the engine, but on the machine. On the machine. On the machine. Right. It's still the original transmission that I'm aware of. I can't find documentation that the transmission's ever been working. When did we buy that? We bought that used back in two thousand four, two thousand three, two thousand four. Okay. Um, and. Nick is my grader operator, and he can tell you the grader is starting to get tired too. Okay. 23 years old now. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem every time you pick it up, there's come back and there's there's issues we have to tinker with, and whether it's blinkers not working or it's uh, leaks or. Um, I kind of took it out of. Out of the working mode when I took over this position because this grader was run pretty much every storm. So every time there was a snowstorm, this grader was going out to plow streets, plow roads, you know. And this machine uh, burns 75 gallons of diesel fuel in eight hours. So she sucks a lot of fuel. <laughs> uh, very expensive to run. So when I became public works director, I kind of talked to Dan McClung at the time. See if we can purchase a plow truck. So on the second page is that plow truck, the first red one. I bought that one out of Vermont. Um, Nick and I actually went down to get it, I believe, or with Jason and I. Okay, Jason and I went down to pick it up. I paid, I think, around fourteen thousand dollars on that truck. Again, it was a used truck from another municipality. Since then, we actually put a stainless steel body on the back of that truck. So my thinking, stainless steel is going to last for a long, long time. The truck probably won't last another 20 years or whatever. So my mentality was, well, let's get a good stainless steel box. And I think Paul was on the council when we approved that. Uh, if we buy another truck, we're going to buy a cab chassis and put that box on the box. Right. box. So right. What are we replacing with the new truck? I like to replace the, the Ford, fourth one, the old four. Mm -hmm. That's a truck I paid. I got out of Massachusetts. I paid nine grand for that truck, and we modified a lot of stuff on there. Because Massachusetts does not get snow like damn near me. <laughs> so uh, we had to do some major modifications on that truck to get it going. Uh, the box in the back, you mentioned rotted. We put a uh, one of our stainless steel slide and Swenson boxes on that truck to get us by for a few more years. And we're, we're always trying to uh, come up with ideas, trying to get us by, get us by, get us by. But the new Western side I want to purchase, you know, I'm and now I'm kind of flipping back and forth between those two single axle trucks. So the red one and the white one, the first one and the second one, I'm kind of flipping back and forth. That red one, uh, Saturday night, uh, Nick had the grader. I jumped into this machine, this truck, and plowing part of uh, Castanier Road. And I was just passing eight marquees, and the truck died on me in the middle of the road at like one o'clock in the morning. Died as it, it just turned off. Engine shut off. Engine that shut off. Yeah, I lost everything. Nice. So I'm it, sitting in the dark. And that's not the first time. No. Because it's happened to me. Nice. Yeah. So I'm sitting in the dark in the middle of a blizzard. I can't see 50 feet around me. Check. Well, I can't get the truck started. I didn't have self service at a little location. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I really didn't want to get out of the truck, but I'm here. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with this truck. I'm trying to start praying to God that nobody behind me is going to run into me. Yeah, no lights or nothing. No lights. Truck just turned right off. So after about five, ten minutes, I finally got to running back and uh, went on my way and went back to the garage and kind of farted in the garage because I was getting kind of nervous with that. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So we looked at it. I had Alan look at it. It's an electrical issue somewhere. But I don't see you guys anything about electrical. You can chase that for forever. Forever. <laughs> Something <laughs> might be chafed on the frame. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless, unless, happening, unless, unless it sounds, sounds like a relay somewhere. that's kicking off. I mean, Jason, we've had this issue before. Jason looked at it. Alan's looked at it. Unless you replace the whole wiring harness. Right. You're probably not going to figure out. Yeah. Unless, yeah, unless you rewire the whole truck, you're, wow. you're probably not going to find it. Yes and no. It could be something really stupid. It, it, it could be. It's to find it. Right. That's it. It could be something that's hitting the brain, that's chafed, yeah. and it just moves Arcs out yeah. for a millimeter. It's good, and then you hit the right bump, and it, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It could be anything. But like, it's just, that's just one thing we've had issues with this truck. Mm -hmm. um, Issues. We have fuel issues, we have gas tank issues, we've had the wheel fall off, we've had uh, a number of things go on with this truck. You know, so I'm looking at these two trucks and I'm going back and forth, which one is, do we need to replace the most? And I, I'm scratching my head here sometimes, I don't know what to do. And, uh, I'll go back down the list, the 09, and I think Pete and John, we were on the council and we had all those issues with the 09. The Max Force engine. That was the one that had the engine issues, correct? Yeah. 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 It's been better yep. since we've taken care of the issue. Yep. But, you know, now, I'm not here tonight to say, hey, we need to have all brand new fleet, but we really need to look seriously at the issues we have with these vehicles. Okay, really this is 2009, the newest plow truck I have. It's the newest. You know, and it's, again, it's been better, but. We've had issues in the past with what's what's a lease on a plow truck go? Uh when we did the Western Star, Paul. Yeah, it was it was it's basically the same price as it was basically the same price. The only fact was that at the end of the lease we gave it back to them and it was So a payment a payment and a lease payment. You're saving, not saving any money one way or the other. No. One way no. Or the only thing is that at the end of the lease you give it is that back. you take the truck and you give it back to whoever you're leasing it from, and you get into another truck. We have no, we have maybe some equity built into it, <coughs> and we get into another truck. Um, leasing a truck is entirely different than leasing a car. Right, because it's a work. Because it's a piece of work equipment. Yeah, it's an equipment. Yeah, uh, it's not, not, a, not just a, a passenger vehicle. You know, I, I, I guess if we, if we were to look at it, the leasing a, a, a truck. Then you know we got this a real deep. This one do a real deep dive on more so than we did the other Western Star, but you know as far as I don't know, I don't know. I, as far as the equipment on the front, I really would like to look, you know talk to Deer or Nortrax or whoever or Jordan Milton or anybody that has a grader about leasing a grader. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a couple things. Um, with the Mac, with the Max uh, I hope we alleviated that problem that we were having yeah. without going into right. a real in-depth discussion. Yeah. How is that truck meant working for you? A lot better. Okay. A lot better. I'm not really concerned. So the we have a new plow truck coming. Yes. Okay. So you're going to have the Max you're going to have the new one, you're going to have two reliable trucks. Yeah. Here's my say on, on the one that's left over, which, whichever one you decide. Um, I'm trying to say this to be politically correct here. You're going to probably have to live with one of these old trucks. Now, and please don't take this as a derogatory statement or anything like that, but I've seen the plow trucks go by on the side streets, and they're going pretty fast. Do we need to plow that fast? To me, the faster you go with a vehicle, especially a plow truck, the harder it's gonna be on the equipment. If you have an older truck, to me, and I'm not saying you guys are not taking care of your stuff, that's not what I'm saying, but I have witnessed it myself. Um, 
you guys work long hours and I get it. And you're trying to keep up with the storm and you're trying to plow. But the stuff does wear out. Right. And the harder you run it, the faster it's going to wear out. I'm not saying you're beating on the truck. Don't get me wrong. But with the new truck that's coming, with the Maxidine, whichever one you choose, whether it's the 04 or the 03, you're going to have to live with it for a bit. Because you see the process of trying to buy another new truck. I don't think that's going to go through anytime soon. And then we could go and say, well, uh, we'll look for another used truck. Right. But are we looking at somebody else's problem? Right. You guys know these trucks. Yeah. So it's like us. I'm not saying us. It's like with any other department. You have your newer vehicles and you got your older vehicles. You know what I mean? The last one, we're going to have to milk it. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have to milk it. We're getting a new truck, Maxidine. I think we're going to be a lot further ahead than what we are now. Um... Another core example is your street sweepers. Those those two machines we got. We got a screaming deal on one, and then you got, and then we let you buy the other one, and uh, now you're gonna both run it, right? Street sweeper, the, uh, the sidewalk, the sidewalk, oh, sidewalk, tractor. The sidewalk tractor. Sorry, Th those are a hundred fifty thousand dollar piece of machine. A lot of other communities but purchase at hundred fifty thousand. We paid ten thousand. We got them for nothing. We did, yeah. And we're making them work. Yeah, right. That's what so can. here's my philosophy. My on, sidewalk on speed. the leftover plow truck, we're gonna have to make it work. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. Now. I for now. Okay. Okay. Um, that's the, just the way it is. I mean, year, and I'll, I've said this before, year after year after year after year of pushing stuff back, pushing stuff back, pushing stuff back by prior administrations is biting us in the butt now. Did it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> save, save, cut, 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 cut. <coughs> I argued sitting in the argument in, in that audience how many times till I was blue in the face that you can't do that. But we did it. They did it. Here we are. You guys have done an unbelievable job as far as running with what you've got. Considering the times that we're living in right now, I think the council has been very proactive in getting you a lot of what you needed. Um, if I could whip out $30 million and slap it on the table and get you guys a whole new fleet, I would do that in a heartbeat. But, I mean... You know where I'm going with this, right? The new truck's coming. We'll get the Maxidine running good. Hopefully that will last. One of those two, we're going to have to milk it. You know what I mean? We're not, we can't afford to buy you two brand new trucks, sir. We can't. Not necessarily just um, asking for another truck. I mean, you're talking, That's this is like going to a buyer beat with a truck that... Uh, the pump works sometimes, but oh, we'll make it work. You know what I mean? It's just you can't rely on it. You, you can't just look at it like, well, um, you know, we'll, we'll make we'll just make this truck work right now because we can't replace it. Well, yeah, um, 